there. I'm Naomi Kinsman, the founder and executive director of Society of Young Inklings, and today we're going to be talking about finding the heart of a scene. Now, this is one of those topics where, um, you know, many children or youth writers, when I speak with them about this, they think, oh, that's not the exciting part of writing. I want to write about um, a volcano, or I want to write an action sequence. Um, I want to write the part where, um, we, where you just want to keep turning the pages. And what's interesting about that comment is that the part where you want to keep turning the pages is actually not as connected to those action sequences as we think. They often are the moments that we do want to turn the pages, but it's not because of the explosions and the monsters and the chasing and the excitement. It has to do with something a little different. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more today. Um, what I want to do to start is to play one of our favorite games, which is fortunately, unfortunately, we've played it before. But today for our session, I tried a new strategy, which you can also try at home. So what I did is I prepared a few index cards that have some different disasters that might happen. And I'm going to be telling you a fortunately, unfortunately story, and I'm going to pull a disaster out of my stack and see if I can pull it into the story. So I'm going to start the story with fortunately, um, Sarah had the opportunity to go to an amusement park for her birthday. And so she woke up early. She was so excited, her parents, and she got in the car. They drove to this amusement park, and she, in her mind, had this idea of riding roller coasters all day. But when they got to the park, unfortunately, there was an evil trick. Well, what happened? was an evil villain named Mr. Pineapple had come to the amusement park and he had turned the entire thing into a pineapple. And so they walked up to the amusement park and all they could see was a giant pineapple. Fortunately, Sarah was a very smart girl and so she decided that she was going to find a way into this, this pineapple. In fact, she had read the story James and the Giant Peach and she knew that sometimes fruit was not exactly what it seemed, especially giant fruit. So she went circling around the pineapple and as she circled and circled, she found a little door in the side of the pineapple, fortunately. And she opened up the door and she tiptoed inside and it smelled super sweet like pineapples would. Um, but inside it was carved out and beautiful. There were staircases that went up and it turned out that this evil trick might have been a special surprise for her to be able to go into this strange new world. Her parents followed her in and they said, are you sure this is a good idea? Well, unfortunately, something disappears. Well, what disappeared was the staircase right from under her feet. She, Sarah, and her family toppled down and down and down from where they had been standing into the heart of this pineapple. The further they fell, the stickier they felt, and they kept on falling. But fortunately, at the bottom of the pineapple, there was a big trampoline. So when they hit the bottom, they bounced back up. And they bounced so high that they hit their heads on the top of the pineapple, and they bounced back down to this trampoline, and they just kept bouncing slower and slower until they were resting on this trampoline. Well, there was no way out of the trampoline. Unfortunately, something was lost. They were actually lost, but not only were they lost, they realized that they had lost. Hmm, what had they lost? They lost their lunch. They didn't have their lunch that they had packed to bring to the amusement park. And so they were going to be very, very hungry as well as stuck inside of this pineapple. So they decided that they would maybe try to eat some of the pineapple since they were a little bit hungry. So they reached out and had a bite of the, pi the pineapple. Unfortunately, Fortunately, that pineapple tasted like all different kinds of things. If you scooped up a little bit of the pineapple and had a bite, it tasted like whatever they wanted it to. They could say, I hope this will be like chocolate ice cream, and it was, or I hope this will be like mm, steak and mashed potatoes, and it was. Well, this was a delicious development, so they started eating and eating. Unfortunately, the pineapple was cursed because it was an evil trick after all. Um, the word is curse. So the curse was that anyone who ate any part of the pineapple turned into a pineapple, him or herself. And so Sarah and her family all turned into little pineapples laying there on the trampoline and nobody knew what 
to do. Now I could go on with this story, but I'm going to stop. In a fortunately, unfortunately story, we have these back and forth moments where we, we build excitement and we build interest. And our story could continue to go on. There could be explosions. There could be um, an evil villain who shows up. Mr. Pineapple could come in. We could have a monster. We could have any sorts of things that really build the excitement. However, what's exciting is more exciting if we really care about why this day is important to this character. So we know that it's Sarah's birthday, and we know that it's an important day for her, but we don't really know why in particular this story matters. And so probably as I was telling the story, your mind started to drift off, and you started to think, hmm, I'm not sure how much I care about Sarah's story right now. It's not necessarily because you know, there needed to be another explosion. It's because you really, when you read stories, you read because you're connecting to the character and you're wondering why something matters to them because you're living through their shoes. In fact, scientists have studied our brains and they have found out that when you are reading a book, the types of things that are happening in your brain are the same types of things that would be happening if you were actually experiencing that kind of an adventure. So let's say you're reading about a character who's running through the forest away from a dragon. In your mind, some of the synapses that are firing are similar to the ones that would be firing if you actually were running away from that story. You know, where we come from, who our parents are, what we care most about, why it's important that we don't get killed by a dragon. But a character, we don't know those things about yet. And often, if we meet a character in a dangerous situation, we won't really care about them. We won't risk caring about them until we know that they really matter. So what we want to do is we want to give characters something that really draws us in, that makes us really care about them. And once we know that thing about a character, then we can start to find the heart of the scene. So the question you have to ask yourself is, why does this moment matter to my character? Now, for Sarah, it's her birthday. So that's something that matters. But what if Sarah has had a string of disasters on her birthday? She's never had a great birthday. And last year after her birthday, she found a fairy. And the fairy told her that next birthday would be the one that changed her life forever. Well, truly, it would if she turns into a pineapple and she never can do anything else again. But what if this day is the day that she finds out she has a magic power? And not only does she have a magic power, but her magic power has the ability to change history, to change the way that things happen for other people. Now suddenly this is starting to have a bigger feel to it. It matters if Sarah becomes less than a pineapple, if she becomes a human again, because she is the one who's going to maybe save a whole um, group of people from being swallowed up in an earthquake or from um, maybe from being chased down by a dragon, right? Maybe she's supposed to be a hero in some way. And so she has this prophecy about her life from this very, she knows this day is very important. She knows the choices that she makes are important. And that's how this starts to become more important to her and to us, because we know that not only does it matter to the character, but it matters in her world in a bigger way. Now, we have created a little page for you. This is a worksheet that's called Finding the Heart of a Scene, and you can download it if you go to the link that we have in this live video. Now, when you're thinking about a story, you have to find the heart of the story overall. But then in each scene, you wanna make sure that it also has a heart. So your whole story might be about a character finding his or her father. Um, and you are, want your character to go through a series of adventures to try to find this parent. And maybe, like in A Wrinkle in Time, the idea is that this character not only is finding his or her parent, but she is finding um, something out about herself. She's learning how she has these capabilities. She has the ability to love in a way that's going to change not only her life, but her family's life and possibly the rest, the rest of the world. Getting rid of it is a very big thing after all. So that's the big heart of the story. That's what the story is all about in Wrinkle in Time, for instance, is that that idea of Meg finding that her weakness, her impulsivity, her her willing, her all of those, um, the, her stubbornness, all those things that are difficult about her also are the things that allow her to stick with, stubbornly love her brother and make such a difference in that story. When we think then about each scene, we need to make sure each scene matters as well. So going on with Wrinkle in Time, 
let's say we're thinking about the scene where um, Meg has to be convinced to go on this adventure by Charles Wallace and um, they are going into the house and they are meeting the missus. Um, if that is the scene that we're talking about, then we need to think about first what happens. So if you find that you have a scene and you're not sure if it has a heart or you think you could deepen the heart, what you can do is you can take this and you can just quickly draw or sketch in some words of things that happen in the beginning, middle, and end of your scene. And what that does is it just gives you something um, something to kind of hang your hat on. You know, in the scene, this is what, what happens. Then the next step is, in this process is to define what the expectations are. So when Meg goes into the house following Charles Wallace, she thinks it's going to be a scary, horrible disaster of a moment, but when she goes inside, she finds that it's beautiful and magical and that Charles Wallace actually did know what he was talking about. And so her whole mindset about this adventure and about what Charles is telling her starts to change. So in this moment, Meg is starting to realize maybe there's something here that I need to pay attention to. So her expectations are that she's going to have to go in and save her brother from a disaster. She gets inside. It turns out to be magic. So in this case, step three, when we track the emotional change, what you can do is you can just use little emoticons. You can do a, a smiley face or a frown, and you can say, you know, in the beginning, she's frowning. She's very unhappy. She's worried. In the middle, she's amazed and surprised. In the end, Maybe she's curious. Maybe she is um, um, full of wonder. Maybe she's a little worried still, but a little bit more positive than she was when she went in. You want to make sure that in the scene, you do have an emotional change. So the reason for the smiley faces or the frown faces or the concerned faces is to get a sense that, yep, in the beginning she felt this way, in the end she felt this other way, and there was some change through the scene. Okay, so that's step number three. Then step number four is to determine the importance of the scene. Is the is the scene um, a one, so not very important to your character, or is the scene a five, super important to your character? You you want to be honest about this, and certainly not every scene should be a five. If every scene is a five, then your story is completely over the top. So in that particular scene in Wrinkle in Time, when she goes into the house, um, it's probably not a five. I would say maybe it's a three. And so it is an important scene to her. She cares. She's worried about her brother. She's learning some new information, but she's not necessarily um, she's not necessarily doing a life or death uh, life or death battle like she does at the end of the story. So you want to you want to think about what number would you assign it? That's just for your information, um, and you can write that down here on this line. Then step five is exploring why. So does this scene help your character get what he or she wants, or if it doesn't help? How does it make things worse? So you want to think about, okay, Meg wants her dad back. She goes into the scene where she thinks that she is now, her brother is now in danger. She's going to have to help save him. She's feeling so much responsibility and so much frustration and everything is going wrong. She goes into this house and she starts to realize that maybe there's a possibility that her father could be found. And as she starts to do that, the reason the scene matters to her is because it introduces the possibility. It introduces a little tiny seed of hope. So the scene is important. It needs to be there because for a plot reason, we meet some characters we need to meet. But for a heart reason, Meg needs to start to believe. And this is where she starts to believe. Okay. Um, on the opposite side, it could be that it blocks her, keeps her from getting to what she wants. So, for instance, in Wrinkle in Time, in the scene where they're on the beach and they're running around and they um, eat the sandwiches and it turns into sand, and then the man tricks Charles Wallace and takes him with him into, um, into the, the brain of it, that is a scene where everything that Meg wants is getting blocked, right? So it's not a scene that makes it easier for her to get what she wants. It makes everything worse. But still, it matters a whole lot because it makes things even more difficult, even more challenging. Because not only is her dad missing, now her brother's missing as well. Okay, then after you've looked at all of these different things, you've looked at the expectations, you've looked at the emotions, you've looked at the importance, you've thought about the why, now this is when you can plan your revision and think about what can I do with this scene? And you can think, okay, I would like for this to actually be more important than a three. I want this to be a four scene. Um, how can I bump up how important this is to my character? And the heart of that is in the why. Maybe you need to shift a few things to make sure that the why really comes through, or maybe um, what actually happens in the middle of the scene needs to change a little bit so that that why can happen. 
or maybe you need to change your character's expectations before they go into the scene so there's a lot more surprise, a lot more emotional change. Um, maybe what you need to do is just be more aware of why this matters to your character and make sure that that actually shows up on the page, either through what they're thinking about or through what they say to one another. You just want to make sure that that why is actually a part of what's happening. So you can plan your revision and then you can go back in and write the scene. Now, the smart cookies out there are probably thinking, hey, wait a minute, I bet I could do this before I write a scene so that I don't have to write a whole scene and then analyze it and then go back and rewrite it. You're absolutely right. What you can do when you're thinking through your next scene is take a quick moment to do some of this planning work, this strategy, because that will make it so that you don't have to rewrite your scene so many times. Actually writing something out in longhand is a lot slower than thinking it out in your mind and, and playing with the storyboard. So if you're one of those people who really likes to do things quickly, um, you want to iterate, you want to um, you know try something out, make sure you've got something that's going to work, this is a really great way for you to think about your scene for a moment before you dive into the scene and write it. Now, you don't, you don't actually ruin the surprise of the scene when you do this because you've just thought through some of the big picture details. Like I said, you only have these three boxes, right? So there's a lot more that happens in your scene than just those three things. People say things in interesting ways. There's going to be fun surprises in the ways that people react to one another. You can still keep all of that fun and um, delight and unexpected um, quality in your scene as you're writing so you can enjoy the process. But you also can have the opportunity to um, kind of speed up your work, especially if you're someone who finds yourself submerged in the writing of a scene where you find yourself getting lost in your story. This is a really great strategy to help you yourself sort of stay on track. And um, even just that simple strategy of thinking about what is the scene? Um, because a lot of people think about their story as a whole story and they don't break it into those moments, but really breaking it into a scene what happens in the beginning, middle, and end of the part that happens on the playground? See if you can make it into a scene and don't sort of bleed it into the next part so that it, it's all sort of a big fuzzy, foggy mess. You wanna make sure you know where the scenes are so that you can say, yeah, this changed from here to here and now I can build the next scene. And then it starts to be like building Legos or um, constructing a house. You're putting these different pieces together and all together they make the experience that you're trying to do with your story or create with your story. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this mini lesson on how to find the heart of your scene. I hope that you explore this possibility and really think hard about the last book that you enjoyed a lot. So not just a book you enjoyed reading, it was a fun escape, but a book that really, really just couldn't put down. And think about why did I care about that character so much? Was there something about them that really connected with me? And you probably will find that the, the story isn't only exciting, while it probably was very exciting, there were also pieces that helped you to care about the character. Maybe you related to them in some way. Maybe one of their weaknesses was um, something you're familiar with, or one of their strengths was something you're familiar with. In any case, you would have something that made you feel something for that character, and to feel as though as you were going on their adventure with them, you personally were having a similar adventure and you were learning similar things to the character. Remember, you can head on over to younginklings.org. You can become a member on our website. You will always have access to all of these videos. You'll know when the next one is out and um, all of our free printable giveaways as well. We have some exciting things coming up this month. We're going to be doing a webinar for parents all about some things you can do to support your young writer. So stay tuned for that. If you download this giveaway, you'll be on the list. So you'll be able to find out about what's coming up next. And we even have some exciting discounts coming up. We don't offer discounts very often, but we have a special one this summer. So you really do want to not only get this giveaway because it's extra special, but also sign up for the list so that you get so you're in the know and you know what's happening and you can be part of that offer in case you would like to do some creative writing with us this summer um, or just in the future. We would love to help you with free resources as well as help connect you to mentors who would love to support you and your creative development. We will see you next week, Tuesday at 2.30. Thanks so much for joining us and hasta la vista. See you soon.